right, welcome to the Christmas Collars Stitching Tutorial. I'm going to share with you two different ways to stitch these little Christmas collar stickers. These are available in my Etsy shop, which I'll link in the description here. Um, and I'm going to go over a few other materials that you're going to need when you do this project. Okay, so number one, you're going to want to find a sweater or it could be a t-shirt. Um, the more cotton it has, the better. This isn't 100% cotton. It has, you know, this nice soft interior. But as long as it's not too, too stretchy and soft, you should be able to stitch on it pretty nicely. So uh, this one is Wild Fable from Target. Um, and again, I'll try to find links for these. This one's like a short kind of cropped sweater. And then I'm going to be doing this one today as well. This one's really long. It's cozy and oversized. You could wear it with leggings. And this one is from Amazon. I've done this for a few different colors now and it works great. You're also probably going to want a hoop, a six or a seven inch hoop probably fits these the best. Um, so you don't have to stitch in a hoop, but I like to. Obviously, you're going to need your stitching stickers for the collar, embroidery scissors. I'm going to be using both a 5 inch DMC embroidery needle and a size 22 DMC embroidery needle. This is a chenille, so it still has the sharp end, but it has a larger eye, which makes it easier when we're working with more strands. And then you're going to need your embroidery floss. I always stick with DMC embroidery floss. It works the best. And today I'm going to be using the colors, just the plain blanc, the white, 816, 3011, 934, and 3777. So that should be all the materials we need, and let's get started. I'm going to start by showing you a um, whipped backstitch that looks like a candy cane. This is always cute for the holidays, and I'm going to use the Ho 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 one to do it. We're going to use 816 and blanc for this one. And I'm going to do it on this minty kind of sage green sweater. So we have a nice peppermint look going here. Okay, so to begin, I like to use a hoop. And this is a six inch hoop, which is going to fit this sticker in it quite nicely. You're going to open up the collar of the sweatshirt and press the hoop in there so that you get the collar part in. So some of the hoop is going to be sticking out a little bit like this. And you want to press it up as close to the shoulder as you can. Untighten the screw of the outer ring and then place it down around and pull it. Then you can tighten the screw. Now you can't always get this quite as tight as you do when you're just doing, oops, see I already, if you pull too hard that'll happen. You can't always get this quite as tight as when you are doing just like a typical embroidery pattern on fabric. Clothing is always a little bit trickier, but I do still like to work with a hoop. It just makes it easier for me. It makes my stitches nicer. You don't have to necessarily work with a hoop. You could just work without one, but it's just going to be a little bit harder. So if you can gently kind of pull a little bit on the edges just to get this as taut as you can, but again, be gentle here because you don't want your hoop to pop off like mine just did. So I have that on nice and tight and now I'm going to place my stitching sticker and you're just going to peel it off and then place it on wherever you want on the collar. So I'm just going to move mine up just a little bit so that the words are resting right below this seam. Okay, so here you can see I placed this down and depending on what shape exactly your collar is, it, you're just going to have to kind of play around with the placement a little bit. Um, it really looks cute however you put it, so don't worry too much if it's not the exact same curve, it's still going to stand out and look really nice. So we have this ready to stitch. So I'm going to start with all six strands of 816. So I'm going to pull a length of thread that goes from about the tip of my fingers to my elbow and cut that off. That's typically a good length. And I'm going to use the size 22 chenille needle it's got a little bit of a bigger eye so you're gonna get your thread through there and then tie off a knot at the other end there are fancier ways to do that but that's just how I do it cut off and leave a little tail and now we're gonna get started stitching we're just gonna use a simple back stitch for this so I'm gonna pick up my sweater and 
Again, clothing can sometimes just be a little bit tricky. You kind of want to hold that back part of the sweater away so that you don't accidentally stitch through it. All right, so we're going to start with a simple back stitch. And when you're working with stick and stitch paper, it can be helpful if you use your non-stitching hand to sort of pinch the paper down. So I'm holding it on the other side and I'm holding it on here with my thumb. This helps kind of anchor your paper down when you're coming up through the fabric with your needle so that the paper doesn't move at all. Once we get it a little bit more anchored down, you don't have to necessarily do this as much, but it definitely helps prevent a sticky needle and keeps your paper from slipping around until we get some more stitches in there. All right, so let's talk about back stitch. You're gonna come up through the fabric and you're going to make a little straight stitch out like this. Come around from the other side, grab your needle and pull it through. Then you're gonna come up again a short stitch length away. We're dealing with curves here, so I wanna keep my stitch lengths nice and tiny. Come back up through the fabric and I wanna go back down through that same hole from the previous stitch. Right back down through that hole and pull. Then you're just gonna repeat that all the way around. I'm gonna come up a stitch length away and go back down through the previous stitches hole and pull. Come up a stitch length away and go back down through the hole from the previous stitch. And generally it's best if you can keep your stitch lengths as even as possible. Now, as soon as you start running low on thread, I could probably keep going just a little bit, but I'll go ahead and show you how to tie off a knot now. You're going to stop wherever you need to, and then you're gonna to come to the back and you're gonna run your needle underneath a nearby stitch. Pull it, leave a little loop, run your needle through that loop, and then pull tight. And when I'm working with clothing, I usually like to do that two times, just to make sure that knot is super secure. You can remove your needle and then cut off the excess, leaving a little tiny tail. And then you're gonna get six more strands of 816 and continue. So go ahead and get this whole, every letter filled in with six strands of 816 to start. And then I'll show you how we're gonna do the whipped backstitch part. One thing I wanted to mention here is even if you do have enough thread, if you come to the end of a word and there's this kind of gap between the two words, I would recommend going ahead and tying off a knot in the back and then restarting for the next word, just because when we're working on clothing, we wanna kind of not have as much um, strands coming across the back in case they catch on anything or that kind of thing. Um, that being said, this is a pretty small gap, so it's not a huge deal if you do just go ahead and pull it across and keep going, but just to be on the safe side, I do recommend tying off a knot and restarting on the next word. All right, so I got all the back stitch done and you could totally just stop right here. I do love the look of just plain back stitch for lettering. It gives it that like just very much so embroidered look to it. But I do want this one to look a little bit like a candy cane. So we're gonna turn this into whipped back stitch and I'm gonna show you how to do that next. Okay, so you have options here. We're using our white thread and you can, with um, whipped back stitch, you could also use six strands, which would make this pretty thick and chunky overall um, with the lettering. But I kind of like it when whichever color I'm doing as the whipped back stitch is a little bit thinner, um, just so it's a little bit more fine on the lettering. But I think both would look great. These letters are big enough that you could definitely do all six strands if you wanted it to be a little bit thicker and stand out more with the white, or you could do just three strands. So I split my strands, so I just have three here. So either way, the steps are gonna be the same though. You're going to come up through the fabric right at the end or right at the beginning of one of your lines. It doesn't really matter where you start. And then I'm using my non-stitching hand to help. I'm gonna kind of push up underneath the sweater here right where I'm gonna be going underneath this stitch, just so that I can angle my needle up as I work under the stitch and it doesn't get stuck on the stick and stitch paper because that is the one thing that's tricky about whipped back stitch with stick and stitch paper. So I have my finger here underneath and I'm pressing up right underneath this stitch 
so that I can sort of angle my needle up and out and I'm going to pull it through. Oops, got a little. Okay. And then I'm going to come back down to the bottom here and I'm going to do that same thing under the next stitch and pull it through. Then I'm going to come back down, do that to the next stitch and pull it through. You always want to start on the same side every time. So I'm always coming through the stitch from this side while I work on this little section right here. This is trickier when I'm filming. It's easier when you're doing it because you can kind of turn it so that you can do it a little bit easier. You can see it makes that really cute candy cane look. This is so perfect for these sweaters and especially any lettering that just has the single weight to it like these letters do. When you get to the end here, because we're going to have to start a new line, you're just going to make a down stitch. And then I'm going to go ahead and start up here and do it again. doesn't really matter which way you start from, like which side of the line you start from, just keep it consistent as you're working on each little section by section. So yeah, you're just going to keep doing that until you've completed each letter. Every time you get to like a new line, so I'm going to keep working this all the way to here, make a down stitch. Then I'll have to do just one right here, make a down stitch, do this little line, and then I'll have to make a down stitch, and then I'll do this line going all the way down, and then make my down stitch, and then I'll start it again over here and do whipped back stitch. So you're going to do that for all of your letters. Tie off whenever you need to, get new thread, and then um, we'll pick back up and I'll show you what's next. All right, so I finished stitching. I'm going to take out the hoop and you're going to take your sweater and you're gonna take it to the sink and you need to wa run warm to hot water. Please don't use cold water. It just doesn't work as well. And you're just gonna let the water pressure from the faucet start to dissolve away all the rest of the stabilizer paper. So just hold this under the water. You can kind of use your finger to rub around any edges where the paper might be clinging to. And once you have it all washed away, sometimes you kind of want to take it out for a second, make sure there's no little paper clinging, and then run it back again. Um, and yeah, once you have it all washed away, you can just set it out to dry, and this will be good to go. So I'll pop back on at the end to show you what that looks like. All right, on my other sweater, I'm going to show you my other favorite way to stitch in lettering. And this is especially good for letters that have the look, like the more calligraphy style, where there's a thicker weight and a thinner weight. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this onto the sweater. Tis the season. Get just a little bit more up. There we go. And we're gonna be using the colors 3011, 3777, and 934. And I'll start over here on Tiz. And I'm gonna grab three strands of this. So I'm gonna pull out the length of thread that I want. And then I'm gonna go ahead and split the strands so that I have just three of them. This time I'm gonna use a size five DMC embroidery needle. Go ahead and tie off my knot at the other end and let's begin stitching. Okay, so let's start with the T here. Um, I'm going to use black split stitch. So I'm going to start with this sort of thin line going up and I'm just going to do back split stitch. So for back split stitch, you're going to start by coming up through the fabric, making a stitch out. 
about a stitch length away, pull through. Then you're going to come back up through the fabric a stitch length away. And instead of in back stitch where we go down through that same hole, you're actually going to come back here and go down about midway through the length of this stitch, and you're going to split those strands down the middle with your needle. So I'm going to go right through those strands. And you're going to repeat that. And repeat that again. Now when you come to curves, you just want to kind of shorten up the length of your stitches a little bit. This is a tight curve here. And that'll help you navigate that curve easier. I'm just going to do tiny little stitches going over this curve here. Back split stitch is very forgiving, so I love it for lettering because there's usually lots of curves and changes of direction, and it works really well for cursive lettering. So I'm going to go all the way down on this part of the T that's thicker, and I'm going to do back split stitch all the way down to here, and then we'll come back in and we'll fill in another row. Okay, so you can see now I'm just coming back up and I'm going to fill in this remaining space on the thicker part of the letter. Still using back split stitch here. And this should get it pretty much all filled in for this little part of the T. Go on all the way up to the top here. Perfect, so that gives you an idea of how to get that stitched in. Now I'll come back over here and just do this part, and this time I just need to do it once because it's just this nice thin weight on the lettering here. And you might just want to go ahead and skip over the section of the T that we've already stitched here. So I'll, I'm at this part, I'm just going to do a little back stitch right through here. And then I'll finish it back up. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of how to use back split stitch for your lettering. I'm going to finish filling in tis, so I'll do the I, the S, I'm going to fill in the dot. I'm just going to do a little satin stitch for the dot. Um, I'll show you how I do that. In just okay, so for the dot on the I here, I'm just going to come up at the middle of it and make a little straight stitch down to the bottom of it. And then I'm going to come up right next to that again at the top of the dot and go right back down at the bottom. And then I'll come up right next to that and do it one more time until I have that whole little dot filled in. Same thing for the little apostrophe over here. I'm just going to make a little tiny stitch here. And then I'll just fill in a couple more for the rounded part. There we go. So um, that is how we do back, back split stitch lettering. And for the the on this one, I'm going to use three strands of 3777. And then for season, I'm going to use three strands of 934, which is a super dark green. It kind of looks black right now, but it's a dark, dark green. Um, but obviously you can use whatever colors you want. 
and go ahead and get that all filled in and then I'll tell you next steps. Okay, so I have this all stitched in and I'm going to go ahead and take the hoop off. You're going to take your sweatshirt or shirt, whatever you stitched on, to your sink and you're going to run warm to hot water under the faucet and you're going to let the pressure of the water dissolve away the rest of the stabilizer paper. You can take a couple of minutes and you can also use your fingers to help kind of rub away any stick and stitch paper that's kind of clinging to the lettering. And then once you get all of the stabilizer paper washed away, you're going to let it dry completely. Okay, so both of my sweaters have dried now. So here's the first one, the ho ho ho. And oh my goodness, there's just nothing better than whipped backstitch to look like a candy cane. That is so cute. So cozy. And then here is Tis the Season. Still with the lighting, this looks a little bit black, but in person, it's more of a green. So we have both of our little sweaters done. Um, here's what the back of these look like. So you can see it's not too messy. Here's the back of this one. I tend to just honestly leave it because I don't, it doesn't bother me. Um, but Sulky brand does sell something called Tender Touch, which is an iron on backing. So you can cut it to size and then iron it on so that it covers the stitches in the back if you want to do that. Um, and then in terms of washing, usually as long as you tied your knots off really well while you were stitching, these will hold up in the washer and the dryer. But if you want them to last a super long time or just to be a little bit extra cautious, you can always just, you know, do them on delicate or hand wash and then hang dry um, and your stitches will just hold up. But I typically really do just wash mine in the washer and the dryer and they're just fine. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below and um, like and subscribe my YouTube channel if you're enjoying these tutorials and this content and hopefully you can make some really cute gifts or things for your family or for yourself this season.